on fasting, doing without to gain within. God uh, calls fasting to, as he puts it, to afflict one soul. Turn to me to Leviticus, where it all started, at least for the Israelites, to Leviticus 16. Read, uh, uh, we're going to read verse 29 to verse 30. It said, This is to be a lasting ordinance for you. On the tenth day of the seventh month, you must deny yourselves and not do any work, whether native born or alien living among you, because of this day of atonement will be made for you to cleanse you. Then, before the Lord, you will be clean from all your sins. It is a Sabbath day's rest, and you must deny yourselves. It is a lasting ordinance. Now, what it's saying here, denying yourself, it is a fast. I'm reading out of the uh, National uh, Version today. But it is afflicting, in a New King James uh, Version, it says, to afflict your soul on this day. So they had a day, a day of atonement, a day of at one man. This is significant for you to know and to understand because on this day, and I'm pretty sure it will be this day, at some point, at that appointed time that Jesus Christ will return to this earth. And atonement means at one man. Remember, you are to afflict your souls. This is the covering of your sin. This is once a year the Israelites got together and all of them, this was their big sin offering that cleansed all of Israel. They got a new slate on this day. But they were fasting on this day without food or drink. And it was a holy day. They did no work on it. So also in Isaiah 58, Just to give you a little background here, Isaiah 58. In verse 4, your fasting ends, as uh, the Lord was talking about, your attitude in fasting. He said, your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. So what this is saying, and throughout this whole verse, you can go back and read it later, through 2 through 11. What this is saying, that you're not only fasting, but your attitude has got to be right too. Or else your fasting avails you nothing. That's right. And what, what God is, is saying here too, read this, that you expect to be heard. Because when you fast, God wakes up and his ears are attuned to you. Mm -hmm. Because you have sacrificed something. You have afflicted your soul so you can get close to God. Because you've got things on your heart. Mm -hmm. You've got things on your mind. And yes. you need answers Amen. for that. And you have not gotten those answers. Mm -hmm. And so you have been praying about that. So now it's time to take the next step. That's right. That's so you need to humble yourself before the Lord. So this is also what afflict means. Afflict, it has two different meanings in it. And all of it means the same. Uh, the first part of it in the fast, and you'll feel that right away probably, it is to distress with mental or bodily pain. Yes. Trouble greatly or grievously. But it also means to humble. You cannot approach God with a, with a, with a proud attitude with haughtiness. Yes. You must be humble. And so afflicting your soul humbles you. And you will learn this, especially for those who will be fasting for the first time, uh, how that will humble you. Yes. You won't be thinking about anything except for the Lord. At least that's the way you're supposed to be. But you'll be afflicted in your body. That means you're going to do without. Now, this is what it means for us as a church, individually and co collectively, 
uh, we're going to do the Daniel's fast next week. So all of us are going to humble ourselves before the Lord. And when you fast, that means to do without something. Mm -hmm. It does. It means to do without something. Something that you regularly do. Something that is close to you. Something that you like. Something that you love. But you give that up for the Lord. Yes. It's a sacrifice. Yes. But here in the Daniel's fast, it's a fast that's going to be just as worthy as a fast that you go for 24 hours without bread and water. And I'll explain that in a minute. It is a fast that you're only going to have fruits, vegetables, unleavened bread, and water for 21 days. 21 days. Now let's go over to Daniel so you'll, you'll know what the fast is all about. There's two places where Daniel fasted in this manner. One, the first part of it that he fasted is in Daniel 1 verses 8 through 16 because he, did, he wanted to obey God and he did not want to defile himself with the king's food because they was, had all kinds of stuff going on with the king. Because everything was on the table for the king. So it says in verse 8, it says, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God caused the official to show favor and sympathy to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord, the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. And back in the day, Nebuchadnezzar would take your head off for on a whim. It, it didn't take much to upset him. Uh, Daniel then said to the guard, whom the chief official had, had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and, as, uh, uh, and as, Azariah. Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to do this test and tested them ten days. And at the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the other young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine uh, they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. Okay, now this is one part of Daniel that he did this not to defile himself. Now here is the part that is so significant to us doing the Daniel's fast. Daniel 10, verse 2, and then verse 12 through 13. At the time I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food or meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Okay, now we go to verse 12. Then he continued... This is the angel after the 21 days, Daniel had did this, God had heard his prayer because Daniel was seeking answers to some of the dreams and the other issues that he was going through while being in captivity in the Chaldean Empire. There was a lot of things troubling him, so Daniel fasted for 21 days. He said, I'm not going to eat anything that's going to be that enjoyable to me. I'm going to take away the meat. The milk, the butter, uh, the, uh, the regular bread, I'm not going to have any wine, I'm not going to do this, I'm, I'm just going to have fruits and vegetables and water to drink for 21 days until the Lord hears me and, and answer his prayer. 
So the Lord did hear him and answered. As a matter of fact, because of that sacrifice, it so pleased the Lord that the Lord sent Gabriel, one of the archangels, to visit Daniel. And during that particular time, Satan withstood Daniel from getting, withstood uh, Gabriel from uh, getting to Daniel. And then Gabriel called on the protector of the brethren, which was Michael. And Michael came down and assisted Gabriel, and Gabriel got through and, and revealed what God had wanted to, to tell Daniel. So for 21 days, Daniel had this fast, and after the 21 days, God answered him. Because he had humbled himself. The same way we're going to humble ourselves. Because we got things on our hearts. We got things on our minds. There are things personally, and there are things collectively that is on our hearts and our minds. And we want answers for that. We want to be encouraged. We want to know which way is us for us to go. We don't want to go on our own. We don't want to make up our own choices. Amen. We want to go in the path in which the Lord has laid for us. Amen. So we see this through God's holiness and his loving kindness and his compassion. As a loving father, and as a father that knows us from top to bottom, mm -hmm. has given us a direct avenue in which to communicate with him Amen. for questions and answers. Amen. And you do that by fasting, by humbling yourself. As, as the scriptures teach in James 4, verse 6, God resists the proud and the haughty but he looks after the humble. He will answer the humble. So if you are all puffed up, this fast may not be for you. Amen. Unless you're fasting not to be puffed up anymore. Amen. But if you think you got it all together, then you got it all together. But this fast is for us that don't have it all together. This fast is for us that, that have questions. Amen. We have issues. It's things that we want laid out for us. Mm -hmm. It is guidance and direction in which we need. Yes, Lord. So in order for God to hear us, we need to humble ourselves, afflict our souls, that is to fast. And in Psalms 10 and verse 17, the Lord, it says, Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart and you will cause your ear to hear. So in your fast, and after your fast, God will hear you. God will hear you. And he is going to answer. He's going to answer our request. So when we fast, we humble ourselves before God. And you do that not just by not eating, because you don't have it. You do it because you do have it and you choose not to do so. Amen. So you are sacrificing yourselves. Because there, as I said before, there's things on your heart. Mm -hmm. I know there's things on your heart. Mm -hmm. There's answers. Yes. We do need to be guided and directed. Amen. Especially over to the decisions that, that might be facing you. Mm -hmm. Big decisions, little decisions. You don't want to go and make those decisions on your own first without praying about it. That's right. Amen. About getting a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. About him inspiring you through the Holy Spirit in which way to go. Because he would never lead us astray. He would never lead us down a path of destruction. That's right. Amen. Never. We will lead ourselves down the path of destruction because we want to do something so bad We'll even blame God. Well, he inspired me to do that. <laughs> yes, we will. Because you wanted to do it anyway. He had nothing to do with it. That's you. And you want to say all that stuff to justify that nonsense. And then when it don't work out for you, you look and you scratch in the back of your head. Now, why did the Lord do that to me? And you still don't want to accept the responsibility. 
That's why it is so important for prayer and fasting. Yes. So he can guide and direct us every step of the way of our lives so we don't run into those mistakes. Amen. Mistakes hurt. Yes. I mean, I got scars and blisters and welts <laughs> all over me. Amen. And only those spots that they beat, that's where, where the Lord was. <laughs> the rest of them is where I was. And so here's the deal. Throughout the entire Bible, folks has fasted. Or even in some cases, they have even been compelled to fast before some big event. I look at the story of Gideon. And when Gideon was going against these, uh, uh, the big army of, uh, of all these folks, it was the Malachites and Midianites and all they had banded together, it was hundreds of thousands of them. And so God chose Gideon, man of valor, he called him. And he was anything but. He was scared little cow down in a hole, <laughs> trying to give him a little wheat and give him a little flour to make him a little bread so nobody would see it. <laughs> And God chose him. And when God chose him, he also, it was about 10 to 20,000 other Israelites came with him. They was ready for that. So God needed to test them. And he said, the Lord told Gideon, you got too many. <laughs> too many. He said, send half of them home. And he said, half of them. 10,000 of them left. Mm -hmm. And so as they was marching toward the era where they was going to do battle, they forgot to take along with the, in their zeal provisions. <laughs> and so they were without food and water for three days and for three nights. Wow. So they were, had to be, and you're marching too? Yeah. Uh, uh, you're, those force marches, now you, those of us in the military, we know about what, what that takes. <laughs> Dust and dirt and heat. I mean, they had to be exhausted. So God tested them. And he said, well, these 10,000, they're too many too, Gideon. So, listen, I'm going to lead you down by this river where it's a nice, cool water. Cool, clean, fresh, running water. And lead them down there and let them drink. And so he led them down there to drink. Now some of them was real thirsty. And I, and, and I was looking at it. I ain't, I ain't mad at it because I, I may have been one of them too. <laughs> now all the ones they got to that water and some of them just fell face down in it. <laughs> and they start lapping it up like a dog. I mean just <laughs> they didn't bother about using their hands or nothing. They just they was they was getting then there was another bunch <laughs> that when they got to the water, they knelt down <clears throat> and they cupped their hands yes. and they take taken a drink you know, easily. And so <clears throat> God had seen enough after those three days and three nights of fasting. He said, for all of those who have drank water and lapped it up like a dog, <laughs> send them home. <laughs> And so out of the 10,000, there was only 300 left. <laughs> By 3%. <laughs> so they were tested in fasting. But so when you fast, let me tell you something about that. You do it physically for a spiritual reason. And whatever you do physically for spiritual reason, God intervenes supernaturally. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he will give you the strength in order to make it through. Any of you, and, and some of us experienced in this church, have gone hungry, and you are hungry. Mm -hmm. Maybe 12 hours, maybe 24 hours. And you are really hungry. You're ravenous. You know, get out of my way. But when you fast for that 24 hours, although you feel the hunger, mm -hmm. but the whole attitude is changed. Amen. Your whole Amen. body has changed. Amen. You can work with that. You, as, you are not physically debilitated as you are as if 
you went without eating because you just didn't have it. Amen. And that's the way God does it. You know, Moses and Jesus and Paul fasted many days and many nights. Mm -hmm. Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights without food or drink. Came down the mountain and had to turn right back around and go back up there another 40 days and 40 nights. Without food or drink. Mm -hmm. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Paul fasted many times. And one day he was shipwrecked and they didn't eat anything for 14 days. Many times they had fasted days, and, and, and throughout the entire Bible, many groups, even the Israelites, even fasted seven days. Even the people of Nineveh, when Jonah was sent to them, because God said that they can turn around and he's going to destroy them, they fasted three days and three nights without food and water, including them. Mm -hmm. So God came in and supernaturally sustained their body. Their organs would have shut down normally. Because right. let me tell you something. If you have water, you could probably last a few weeks with, with, uh, with, with, with water. Just water by itself. But don't move around too much. You know, just kind of just lay up. <laughs> now, you could last. Now, this is, this is, this is science. This is just, just how we are. You could last three to four days without food before your organs and everything would, would shut down and you'll die. That's right, that's right. Now, if you was out both food and water for three of you, you're out of here. You're dead. Just like any animal on the field. They must eat in order to sustain their lives. You must eat in order to sustain your life. However, when you fast, you have given your life over to the Lord. And he is sustaining you. He gives you the strength. Amen. You cannot make it on a fast. He wouldn't even put it in here if he wasn't involved in it. Amen. But he wants your mind and your heart to be right. Just like the disciples with Jesus did not fast while Jesus was alive. And he told them, you need not fast while the bridegroom is here, meaning himself. This is, this is the feasting time. You don't fast while the bridegroom is here. You fast when the bridegroom is gone. So they did not fast while Jesus was here. But when Jesus left, they did fast. They fasted many times. So when you fast, this is what you're doing. You're showing God. This is why God listens to you. You're saying, I am putting... I'm trusting you, Lord, and I'm putting my life in your hands. You are all-powerful, almighty. Life is within you. So I'm fasting to get close to you, and I trust that you're going to allow me to do this, and you're going to sustain me during this time. And it's complete trust in the Lord. And this is what he looks at. This is what motivates the Lord to hear what you got to say. It's the form of turning your life over to the Lord. But when you fast, Jesus says, you need not look like you fast. Now some folks like to say they fasting and, and fasting for praise. You know, to, to say to the world, look how spiritual I am. I'm fasting. <laughs> and they got their face all tore up. Oh, God, I'm all over here, but I'm fasting for the Lord, you know. <laughs> you know, to get wrecking the oh, yeah, he, he's spiritual. Look at him, he's fasting. Look how hungry he is. But Jesus says, when you fast, he said, don't do as the hypocrites do looking for recognition. Because if you fast, and that's between you and the Lord, it is not for you to go out and shout it amongst the rooftops and all around the world, well, I'm fasting for the Lord. You fast for the Lord, that's between you and Him. And He says, what I want you to do, because if you go out acting a fool and bring attention unto yourself, He said, you already got your answer. You got your reward already just by doing that. 
But however, when you fast, Jesus says, you don't need to look like, your, don't tear your face up because you're hungry. He said, wash your face, comb your hair, put on lotion, get yourself together. This is between me and you. No one has to know that you're fasting to the Lord. That's between me and you. And then if you do it secretly, then he's going to reward you openly. But if you do it openly, just for self-recognition, you know, you got a lot of folks who do things just to be self-recognized. You know, they want to be jumped up and down. They want their name up in lights. And if they can't have their names up in lights, you can't see them. And that's not pleasing to the Lord. So if we need food to sustain our lives, and even the animals in the field know this, you know, they have to eat too. And they all know, they understand, if you don't eat, you will die. So in order for this fast to be an effective one, our hearts need to be right. Mm -hmm. And we're doing this church as a church, collectively, to support one another. Now, I know some of you have never fasted before. Let me tell you something. When you fast, and with the Daniel's fast, you're not going to be deprived of, 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 of food and water because you will have that, but the enhancements that you're going to miss. You know, the butter, yes. love butter, milk, <laughs> eggs, <laughs> sugar, honey, syrup. No pancakes, no bread, at least the regular bread, unleavened bread. You know, bread without baking powder or yeast in it. <laughs> and that fast is going to be just as effective as if you were doing completely without. Mm -hmm. Because it is to the Lord. And it will take, and, and guess what, 21 days. 21 days. You know, after 21 days, if you do a thing for 21 days, it will become a habit for you. Yeah. So after 21 days, your fast ends. So it's not a habit. It's the fast. Now, some folks would do this in order to lose weight. You will lose some weight, but it'd be good weight. It's a chance to clean out your system from the toxins that's in it. You will have more energy. Of course, you'll have less to carry around, too. <laughs> you will be surprised how much time you will have for prayer and study. You will be surprised the amount of time we as human beings take in the preparation and the consumption of food. Yes. Most of your day is for food. Yes. You watch when you don't have that. Even with the Daniel's fast, where you got your, your vegetables and everything. Oh, and in the morning. Well, you can have oatmeal and, uh, and, uh, and grits and stuff like that. But, I mean, you can't have that butter and that honey and that brown <laughs> sugar and all that other stuff pile on it. You can get you a little dash of salt, <clears throat> and, uh, and and that'd be it for you. And then you can make you some unleavened bread. Anybody want to know how to make unleavened bread? Just let me know. I'll show you. <clears throat> We're going to have some today, but it, it, the one you, you make won't be like that. <laughs> and, and so you can have the vegetables. You know, your potatoes and everything. This is a good thing. You do without meat. You know, there's no meat, no chicken, no fish, no beef, no hamburgers, no hot dogs, no filet of fish, no Big Macs. <laughs> none of that stuff. Or none of that processed stuff. You know, you can have peanut butter as long as it's just straight peanut butter. You know, none, none of that sugar added stuff. You know, then they make it. Lord Scudder's got some. You know, you'll see it because the oil is separated from the peanuts. And you'll have to <laughs> stir it up and mix it up. But that'll go good with your unleavened, help you no. swallow that unleavened bread. <laughs> so I'm just telling you what you're, what you're uh, getting into and stick with it, y'all. Yes. It, it might be tough for the first couple of days, but after a while, 
you'll get used to it. You, you, uh, it won't be any more. It won't be no coffee or tea. So you'll be free of that uh, the, the toxins and uh, and all the caffeine that's been in your body, jumping around like it is in mine. <clears throat> and uh, and you'll be free of that. Uh, don't buy any of the fruit juice off the shelf because there's added sugar in it. But you can. Uh, what I plan to do come Monday, go right over here to uh, the, the Grove, right over here on Van Buren, but have the oranges. And give me a bag of those oranges, okay? That's about five or seven dollars, and you can make your own orange juice. It's, it's, it's natural. And what's in it is, is what's in it. Because everything has some form, vegetables and fruit have some form of sugar in it. It does, it's natural. But what, it, what, what happens during the process, they have to, they've taken so much out, they have to add stuff in. And where they, they add sugar and, and a bunch of other stuff to make it taste like something because they pulverize this stuff until it's into nothing. And so you can have a, a olive oil and, and a little vinegar maybe to go with your, 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 your salads. I know my wife would love that. she got no problem with that. I do. Where's my thousand olives? My ranch. Mustard and all that stuff. But uh, with that, as you're cleaning your body out, you're going to be cleaning also your soul out as well. And without the other added time of all the food preparation, because it won't take that long to progress vessels, uh, you'll have more time to pray. You'll have uh, more time to spend with the Lord, and you'll get closer to the Lord that way. The scriptures will come alive for you because God is really close to you at that point because he knows where you're at, he knows what you're going through, and he believe, believe this or not, he's going to sustain you. Now, when you fast, it is a sacrifice, so there will be some distress. It needs to be some distress, or else it wouldn't be a sacrifice. So, with this truth in the light, I think we're really going to move forward. As I said before, at, at the beginning, I feel his spirit already moving. He is excited and, and really anticipating our participation in this fast to get close to the Lord. Amen. Because we need some answers done for our church collectively, where we're we going, where we're we going to be. It was some things that came up as we had asked you to pray for about uh, even our new lease agreement. And uh, and so we felt this, my wife and I, I know some of you, we felt this spirit. It was, uh, it was evil. That's what it was. Because, I mean, it had no joy in it. It had nothing but doubt and suspicion and, 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 and all those other things that come with it until we came today. And then it was a whole nother atmosphere, a whole nother spirit to let you know that I am with you. You yes. still have favor. Yes, right. and, and so we're getting ready to do this thing, and, and this puts the devil on the back burner. Amen. Amen. And pray him, and I hope you do this anyway, yes. pray him out of your house yes. each and every day when you get up. Yes. And when you do that in the name of Jesus, he has and will lead. Yes. And you can take it from there. Because all of us wants to be happy. The yes. Lord wants us to be happy. He wants us to be happy in the Lord. To be happy in the Lord is being obeying his word. And to obey his word, we need to be close to him. We need to know what that word is. We need to. We do need that time to study and pray. Because none of us study and pray enough. Amen. But the power that this is going to give us that God is going to bestow upon us through the Holy Spirit. I can't wait to hear your testimonies <laughs> and your struggles. If anybody is struggling, just give me a call. Yes, yes. Maybe I'll call you too. <laughs> That's right. And we're going to work this together. Yeah. We are a family. Amen. Family does things together. Amen. Now, there's going to be other times, and, and this is a, a, a good time for those that have never fasted before to get a chance to, to experience what a fast is without really uh, or really going without food and drink. Mm -hmm. Because at some times of the year, 
uh, on your own, you need to, to fast. Those things come up, and you need to you need to fast about that to to uh, with the Lord, just like the disciples uh, 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 came to him, and they was wondering why this particular demon they couldn't cast out. <clears throat> and he said, "Well, this one takes fasting and prayer." So there are things in your life that's going to take fasting and prayer to have it resolved. That's right. And God allows those things for us so we can get close to him and stay close to him so he can protect us. Mm -hmm. You know, we, he gives us a free moral agency in which to choose. He don't make us do anything, but he wants us to do the things that's going to be right and pleasing in his sight. Mm -hmm. And you please him, you're going to be pleased. Because he's in a pleasing business. So, this week, we plan to start this, uh, we, I guess, Monday evening. Uh, I, we do know that our dear brother uh, Floyd's birthday mm -hmm. is coming up. <clears throat> and I'm celebrating uh, five years of being cancer-free on that day. And, uh, so we might want to celebrate a little bit, but right, it's his yeah, right. And but Mia's right after that, we want to start the fast. And Mia's birthday too, Pastor. And Mia's birthday, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. So we want to celebrate that, and then start the fast. It's up to you. Twenty-one days later, uh, the fast will end uh, on the twenty-seventh. Uh, that weekend is the Super Bowl. So, you know, excuse me, Pastor. We was, I was going to ask everybody, since we're just small, you know, the, tomorrow is, is Floyd's birthday, but Connor's birthday is the 26th, which is a Sunday. Do we, because we was going to all try to break the fast together, like maybe go to Steers and I and have some food. <laughs> and um, so we wanted to, you know, which one, what day you guys choose? Do you want to start tomorrow on the 6th or do you want to start the 7th? The sixth means you end on the 26th, but the seventh means you end on the 27th. But this is this is how you can do that. Oh, in the evening? At, at evening. Mm -hmm. You know, at that evening, mm -hmm. and you can start right right after the, the little yeah. celebration, you can start yeah, the fast. So yeah. when it comes on, on her birthday, at that evening, oh, that, at that, that Sunday evening, at, 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 at that time, okay. and then uh, we got 21 days and we can right. break the fast. So it will essentially start tomorrow. Uh -huh. No, no. Uh, tomorrow evening tomorrow at dusk. Yeah. After, cause the, you know, days are from dust to dust. Okay. So I got until after tomorrow. You got until dust to eat and do your thing. <laughs> and then the dust of the 26th, we will, the deaconess will be right. here after that. So, so this is what I suggest today. You write down for yourself everything that you need to answer from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just write it down on a piece mm -hmm. of paper. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, at the end of those 21 days of your fast, and when you go into your prayer closet, present that list before the Lord. I'm going to keep a journal for 21 days. Because I'm going to do the same. Fine. I'm going to do the same. And so I suggest you do the same as well. Right what you feel every day, like we did with Chrissy. Say, that out there. And we get a little weak, just call each other. But I think we'll be all right. That's right. So Even Paul is really thin, but remember, Dad and Dad, they look better than other people. So That's right, and it can be fun. I mean, uh, uh, you, you know, like you can have, uh, uh, you know, your salads. You can have you some uh, unleavened bread. There's, there's other things they sell, things you can put on your salad that's not, not, not leavened. And uh, uh, you can eat uh, different vegetables. You could, you could stir fry them. Yeah, the potatoes with the olive oil. Yeah, with, with the olive oil. You can put seasoning and stuff on it. Like greens. Yeah. Yeah, you can eat beans, mm -hmm. but but you can't. I mean, you can't put that fat back in them. Or the ham hocks, or or any of that, any of that other stuff. Because this is this is what I want to tell you. It is not so much about the physical, about being so regimented that I'm I'm doing this and I'm doing that. It's about your attitude. It's about sticking with this. Even though you may make a mistake, everybody does from time to time. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. Don't give up then. Just pick up where you, where, you, where you left off and keep right on going. God is looking at our attitude. It's not about our physical. It's never been about the physical. Mm -hmm. Now, he used physical things to get across to us spiritual things because we're so physical. Mm -hmm. We're so carnal. 
and you can understand things if it is placed in front of you in a physical way. Yes. But this is all about the spiritual. Because I tell you what, when you get to the kingdom of heaven, there will be no fasting in the kingdom. No. We'll be celebrating and we'll be feasting. But right now, we need to we need to fast because we, we need to hear what thus says the Lord. Amen. We need to get close to our God. We need to let him guide us and direct us so we can move forward, yes. so we can live happy, productive lives. Yes. we got a lot to pray for. He has blessed us with a lot, but there's a lot more going on. Mm -hmm. A lot more going on, and not just us individually, but but, but everyone. Yes. Everyone. we got families to pray for. Yes. And, and, and uh, so just let God know that, 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 that we are faithful and, and, and we mean business about his work. So let us humble ourselves before the Lord and fast this fast, placing our lives in his hands so we can hear what thus says the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.